Hi, my name is Dorothy McQuistian, and I was first introduced to the striped plateau lizard by my science stories partner, Stacy Weiss, professor of biology at the University of Puget Sound. The topic of my art book was the striped plateau lizard. Here's Stacy Weiss holding a specimen of the lizard in the UPS biology lab in late February 2020. Also in the lab were lizard eggs, part of Stacy's research into the importance of the cloaca in protecting the eggs from fungi. In early March 2020, before everything shut down, I was fortunate to hear a student senior thesis presentation on this topic. The striped plateau lizard lives in the Chiricahua Mountains. The northern edge of the range is in southeastern Arizona. Most of the range is in Mexico. Before the pandemic and travel restrictions kicked in, I had imagined visiting the area in the spring. Maybe one day I'll get to make that trip. Stacy shared many photos from student research trips to Arizona. These photos were a big part of what inspired my book. I was getting a picture of the lizard's life and could visualize it skittering around on the ground in the leaf litter and on the rocks. Here we see lizards that are marked for identification for research in the field. I was also inspired by a book Stacy referred me to, Weldon F. Held's Sky Island. Held and his wife lived on a ranch in the Chiricahua wilderness for several years in the mid 1960s. His writing is evocative of the place, climates, plants, animals, and people that lived there. My sense of the place was expanding. Another area of Professor Weiss's research has to do with the significance of the bright marks that appear on the lizard's chin during mating season. But at this point, I was leaning towards depicting the lizard in its habitat rather than tying my artwork specifically to Stacy's research. Last summer, I was doing some botanical dyeing, and the idea of using this method for my project felt like a good fit. In this process, collected leaves are placed on prepared wet paper, rolled and tied tightly. The rolls of paper are simmered in a dye bath for a couple of hours. It's a magical moment when the leaves are washed off and imprints are revealed on the paper. I was looking for a way to depict the lizard and started by making sketches from the photos. Once the libraries were open, I checked out books on reptiles for more images and information. I decided to show the annual life cycle of the, liz of the lizard, one season in each of four books in the set. From the sketches, I cut out stencils on Tyvek, then painted the lizard shapes with watercolor masking fluid. This is a piece of dyed paper in the background, just so you can see the stencils. I wasn't sure if I would if this would work, would the masking fluid dissolve in the dye bath? To my surprise, it held up. I started with Puget Sound plant material from families similar to those found in the Chiricahua Mountains. I communicated with Stacy about my paper dyeing, and she contacted a colleague in Arizona, Jeff Bender, director of the American Museum of Natural History's Southwestern Research Station. She asked him to send me some plant material, and he did. Using this plant material made a big difference in the final set of books. This photo shows paper dyed, papers dyed with the plants from the Chiricahua Mountains. I love how the lizard shapes blend in with the leaves, just as we find them in the wild. Here are the final set of four books. Each book is numbered in the same resist technique that I used with the lizard images. Book one is about the lizard emerging from hibernation and going off into the world, looking for food and a mate. I love how the image blends in with the leaf. Book two is about Finding a mate. Most of these images are taken from uh, the photos that Stacy provided to me. Book three is about the female laying eggs. She digs a little hole, 
lays 8 to 12 eggs and skitters off. She does not stay around to nurture the eggs and they are on their own. So this particular book I was just going to show the uh, this is the the images of the leaves. Uh, this is the black walnut, this is oak, this long stem is yucca. The big gold leaf is uh, from the sycamore tree. And uh, there were also some, some grasses that were included, this beautiful green, it wasn't identified. Um, oh, but this one was, this is uh, milkweed. And the fourth book, final book, is uh, about the eggs hatching. And the uh, lizards emerge, totally developed, and they skitter off into the world. And those, hopefully, that they don't get picked off by a predator, and they start the cycle over again. Each book has a colophon in the back that's hidden away in a, in a little pocket and has information like this one is, a, is about the uh, lizard's hatching and also information about the paper and so on. And then the four books slip into a partial slip case which I made out of Japanese Momi paper. It's very nice. It's a soft paper. But it's also quite uh, durable. And I made a slip case cover which is covered with dyed paper. And that's my project.